when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when you are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you, to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Israelites, I am glad that a lot of you are beginning to understand the truth. The Most High is transforming many of you when you allow him to renew your mind. Don't let anyone distract you from eating spiritual food that will deliver you from bondage. For multiple generations, our people followed religion and the beast culture's traditions in serving the Most High. The Israelites and the indigenous black people remain in bondage until this day. Now that the awakening is here, Give the Most High the opportunity to reveal who he is to you. Just as the Most High gave Ezekiel a book and a scroll that had his words written on them to eat in the spirit realm, you too have to eat the word to nourish your spirit. Don't let anyone distract you from building up your spirit to stand against the dark powers of this world. Your spirit need as much spiritual food as possible to stand against your enemies. What your spirit requires for battle is different from the flesh requirements. Many of you know how to operate in the flesh. Religion and the beast system taught you to operate in the flesh. Operating in the flesh disconnect you from the most high. The scripture said, you cannot please the most high in the flesh. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The workers of iniquity knew the only way they can rule over you is if they disconnect you from the most high. Operating in the flesh will never bring the will of the father in your life. The scripture said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. If the scriptures say we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, why would religion teach you to operate in the flesh? The high level workers of iniquity in religion strategically disarm you for battle. When you enter the battlefield clothed in the garment of the flesh, you will never win the battle. Fighting in the flesh is like entering the battlefield without a weapon. Fighting in the flesh is Satan fighting against Satan. You can't use the devices of Satan to beat Satan. Israelites, you must understand how your enemies come against you. Now is the time for you to increase your knowledge about the spirit. Before the prophet Ezekiel was sent to his people to carry out the will of the father, the Most High prepared him for the call on his life in the spirit realm. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. The Most High did not prepare Ezekiel by training him at a gym to build muscles. The Most High did not send Ezekiel to seminary school to get a doctorate degree that proclaimed he can teach the word. None of the prophets the Most High used in the scriptures attended a heathen school to learn how to serve the Most High. The Most High taught his people by his spirit. The Spirit of the Most High entered Ezekiel and revealed to him the calling on his life. Once the Most High revealed the call to Ezekiel, the Father started to prepare him. The Most High warned Ezekiel and said to him, I am sending you to a rebellious people, a people who is stiff-necked. The Most High told Ezekiel what to say to his people. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. 
Israelites, nothing has changed about majority of our people's rebellious ways and stubborn hearts. Until this day, majority of Israelites in the awakening and outside the awakening refuse to obey the Father. They keep rejecting knowledge, which is why they are perishing. The Most High knew the mentality of his people. He prepared Ezekiel on how to deal with them. The Most High said to Ezekiel, do not be afraid of their words, as well as the dirty looks they will give you. The Most High warned Ezekiel that he's among scorpions. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks though they be a rebellious house. Israelites, this is why I don't let anything the wicked of our people say about me and their insults faze me. The scriptures showed me what kind of people I am dealing with, a rebellious people who are quick to speak and slow to obtain knowledge. If our people was wise, we wouldn't be in captivity going around in circles for multiple generations, nor would we trade our God for the useless idols of the heathens. The remnant should share the same sentiment when it comes to our people. Only a remnant will understand. To the remnant, always put the Father at the forefront in everything that you do. The Most High equipped and prepared the prophet Ezekiel in the spirit realm by making him eat a book and a scroll that had his words written in it. When Ezekiel ate the book and scroll with the word of the Most High, it nourished Ezekiel's spirit to do the will of the Father. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Our spirit does not live by bread, but by the word of the Most High. Israelites, did you notice when Ezekiel's spirit ate the scroll, it tastes like honey in his mouth. Honey in the spirit realm symbolizes abundance. Just as the land the Most High gave to us, the promised land is a place filled with milk and honey. As you grow spiritually, you will begin to recognize these symbols. Be patient when you work with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Most High will show you all things. I once didn't understand these things, and I humbled myself before the Father and asked the Father to teach me everything. The Father answered my prayers and began to teach me. Israelites, make sure you have a teachable spirit. Nobody knows everything. There's always something for you to learn. Maintaining a teachable spirit will help you overcome spiritual traps set by the kingdom of darkness as well as receiving many blessings from the Father when you're teachable. Remain humble. John in the book of Revelation had a similar experience as Ezekiel. The angel told John to eat the little book. When he ate the book, it tastes like honey to him as well. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. I wanted to point out to you how Ezekiel and John ate a book in the spirit realm. Both of these books contain the word of the Most High. The scripture is correct when it say the Most High doesn't change. 
The Most High prepared both of these men the same way despite living in two different generations. The Most High is dealing with his people the exact same way in this generation. Don't let religion fool you. Israelites, the scroll, the book, and the honey are symbols in the spirit realm. You must search the scriptures to see what does the word say about the symbols you see in the spirit realm. The scroll and book symbolize the word of the Most High. The spirit of John and Ezekiel both ate the word of the Most High to obtain the knowledge they needed, as well as giving their spirit the fuel it needs to do the will of the Father. Did you notice in the scriptures, John and Ezekiel did not eat a burger in the spirit realm or any worldly food to nourish their spirit? But they ate a book and a scroll that had the word of the Most High written that nourished their spirit. After they ate the scroll and the book, they gained wisdom. The voice of the angel that spoke with John said to him after eating the little book, You will prophesy before many people, nations, and tongues. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. The word of the Most High is the weapon you need to stand against every spiritual attack. Without the word, you're unable to stand against your enemies. The scriptures did say the word is powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. The word is the sword that will cut off your enemy's head. Israelites, know the word. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of the Most High also symbolizes the Messiah, for he is the word that became flesh. The Messiah is the one that will carry out the will of the Father in the end. Israelites, it is important for you to know that insults, physical fights in the flesh, protesting and marching, as well as many other methods you use to fight your enemies in the physical realm will not cut off your enemy's head like the word of the Most High could. Nor will fighting in the flesh will penetrate their spirit to bring forth change. That is why you're fighting the same battles in every generation. The B system made sure to replace the word of the Most High, which also symbolizes a weapon with their army of flesh and idols. The beast religion replaced the word with man-made laws and traditions. Israelites, return to the word, for the word is the truth. The word of the Most High has the ability to sanctify you with truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. When you learn the truth, the scripture said the truth shall make you free. In the spirit realm, if you see someone handing you a book that has the word in it or a person giving you a Bible, this have similar meaning with eating a scroll or a book. Also, if someone hand you a Bible in the spirit realm, it can also mean you were called to teach. Remember, Israelites, I am giving you a general meaning. Everything you see in the spirit realm has a meaning and is important. Make sure you're decoding the symbols with the Father and asking the Most High to give you the interpretation of what you saw. A book can have several meaning in the spirit realm. Levi, the progenitor of the Levi tribe, when he asked the Father to save him from iniquity, after his prayer, he fell asleep and in the spirit realm, the angel of the Most High led him into the presence of the Father. And I was grieving for the race of the sons of men, and I prayed to the Lord that I might be saved. Then there fell upon me a sleep, and I beheld the high mountain, and I was upon it. And behold, the heavens were opened, and an angel of God said to me, Levi, enter. When Levi entered the heavens in the spirit realm, Levi revealed to his children how the seven angels prepared him for the priesthood. The angels anointed him and placed the garment of righteousness on him. Levi said that the first angel anointed him with holy oil. The second angel washed him with pure water and fed him with bread and wine. The second angel also put a holy robe on him. The third angel clothed him with a vestment like an ephod. The fourth angel put a purple girdle around him. The fifth angel gave him a branch of olive. The sixth angel placed a crown on his head. 
The seventh angel placed a diadem of priesthood on his head and filled his hand with incense. All of this was done in the spirit realm when the Most High gave Levi the priesthood. Levi didn't go to a church to become a priest. His father Jacob had a vision confirming that Levi was their priest. Isaac put Levi in remembrance of the laws, just as the angel of the Most High told Levi in the spirit realm. And when we came to Bethel, my father saw a vision concerning me that I should be their priest unto God. And Isaac called me continually to put me in remembrance of the law of the Lord, even as the angel of the Lord showed unto me. As you can see, Israelites and indigenous black people, in order to nourish your spirit to stand against your enemies, you must know the word and the Most High must be with you. The Holy Spirit will reveal the truth to you in the spirit realm. Your weapon is the word of the Most High. Take the weapon the Most High gave to you, which is the word, to stand against your enemies. In the physical realm, the word may appear powerless. Believe me when I say the word of the Most High, when activated properly, will pierce the spirit of all flesh. That is why when the word is coming out in the form of truth, many run away from the truth. A lot of people can't stand the truth. The truth exposes them. Israelites, don't enter the battlefield without the weapon the Most High gave to you. Have you ever heard of anyone entering a battlefield or winning a war without a weapon? Many of you have been led to believe you need an army of flesh to give victory over your enemies. How many nations proclaim Black Lives Matter and turn around destroyed you in the beast system? You need the army of the Most High to stand with you. I will say it again. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places the most highest army is greater than any army of flesh the scripture said the ones anointed to execute the judgments of the father are strong and powerful and in the second are the hosts of the armies which are ordained for the day of judgment to work vengeance on the spirit of deceit and of belier and the lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? The Most High placed the strongest of them all over you Israelites and all the righteous. The Holy Angel Michael. He will execute the judgments of the Father with his angels. It is written regardless if you believe it or not. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Israelites, make sure you don't enter the battlefield without a weapon during spiritual warfare. Last week you learned how to recognize a spiritual attack. This week you need to recognize your victories. When you are aware of all your victories, this will encourage you to seek the Most High to strengthen your relationship with the Father. Israelites, the fact that the indigenous black people are still here, despite of all the persecution, is a sign of victory. The Satans wage war and murder against you since the beginning. The Most High stood with you despite of your stubborn hearts and allow you to still be here is a great victory. The Satans will continue to wage war against you until the end comes. Again, he said, and as much as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. The Satans know that as long as you have the father on your side, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. That is why the Satans created the beast system to deceive you into believing you're serving the Most High. The truth is the workers of iniquity pretend to serve the Most High. The God behind their altars are fallen angels. The beast system is designed to manipulate you into believing we are all equal and serving one God. The God they refer to is not the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
Israelites, that is why you have to look within for the kingdom of the most high. The spirit realm will reveal to you what is happening around you. Everything in the beast system represents the God of this world, the Satans. The beast culture is nothing but an illusion. That is why you have to look within. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Israelites, one of the greatest signs that you achieve victory over your enemies when everything in your life starts to fall apart. I know that you have been led to believe that when disaster happens, it's because of sin. Also, the beast culture made it seem as if when everything falls apart, your enemies have won. Israelites, that couldn't be the furthest from the truth. Job was a righteous man, according to the scriptures. Job had no idea that the Most High was bragging about him to Satan. The Most High challenged Satan to come against Job. Job had no idea that his life was going to fall apart like it did. When disaster came upon Job, he repented because he thought he had unknowingly sinned. However, it was the Most High putting Job through a test. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Job was living his best life, serving the Most High, when everything started to fall apart. He was serving the Father in the spirit and in truth. One day, his servants came running to him to inform him of all the persecution that came upon him. Job had no warning that his life was going to fall apart. As far as Job was concerned, he was serving the Most High to the best of his ability. When the Most High gave Satan the authority to persecute Job, that is when Job began to experience extreme hardship. The scriptures reveal while the first servant came to tell Job about his flocks, another servant came to inform him about the fate of his kids. This continued until Job lost everything. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only have escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Israelites, sometimes... Sin is not the reason your life starts to fall apart. Like Job, the Most High can be testing you. Also, everything starts to fall apart when a blessing is on its way. Israelites, you should know the difference between a trial that is meant to elevate you from a trial that is of the Satans to reestablish a covenant. Trials from the Satans consist of unclean spirits returning to torment you. The kingdom of darkness is hoping that you will comply to their deception to reestablish the covenant that was broken. The kingdom of darkness is always trying to get you to accept something. Beware of dreams that show someone or something is asking you to join them or accepting a gift from them. Trials that comes from the most high usually come in the form of a test that results in spiritual growth. When Satan tempts you, all temptations cater to your flesh desires. When the Most High tests you, he is building your character. Israelites, when everything starts to fall apart, don't give up. Giving up is what the enemy want you to do. Instead of giving up, praise the Most High. The scripture said, count it as joy when you fall into diverse trials, temptations, and tribulations. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this 
that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou Most High. Praising the Most High show that you trust him, and you know that all the trials will pass away. When Job's servants came to him with bad news, one after another, Job didn't fall into depression, nor did Job turn his back on the Most High. Despite his wife encouraging Job to curse the Most High and die, Job remained loyal to the Most High. The first thing Job did after receiving bad news about his children and everything that he owns, Job humbled himself before the Most High and worshipped. Job went on to say, naked he came into the world and naked he will leave. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Israelites, you should share the same mindset with Job when everything starts to fall apart in your life. Giving up is what the enemy want you to do. You should praise the Most High throughout persecution. While you are praising the Most High, your healing and redemption will come. Job did not sin while he waited for the Most High to restore to him everything that he lost. He trusted the Most High in the process and achieved great victory. The Most High gave Job double for everything that he lost. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Israelites, this is why it is important for you to stand firm when everything starts to fall apart. Instead of focusing on the chaos, shift your focus to the Father. In due time, you will reap if you faint not. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. When the Most High deliver you from a stronghold, the Satans, unclean spirits, and the workers of iniquity use to keep you in bondage, your life will appear as if it's out of control. When you're delivered from an evil covenant, the unclean spirits will persecute you. They will make it look like your prayers are not being heard, as well as the fast you did to cleanse yourself from bondage didn't work. The reason the unclean spirits and the Satans make your life appear to be out of control after a fast and repentance, they don't want you to know that the Most High heard your prayers and the Most High received your fast. They start to make your life become unmanageable to deceive you into giving up to go back to your old habits. When you give up, you give these unclean spirits the opportunity to return. The scripture said in the Bible, when the unclean spirits return, it will bring other devils more wicked than itself to fight against you to try and secure its house. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The unclean spirits is fighting you to keep its place in your life. Instead of you focusing on your deliverance, the devils will get you to focus on your hardship. The unclean spirits you've successfully broke the covenants with will use the people around you to get you to return to your old ways. When you give into the temptations coming from your family members and friends, you are giving the unclean spirits that was cast out the opportunity to return to put you in bondage again. That is how a lot of people reestablish covenants the Most High delivered them from. A lot of you in the awakening can relate to this example. When you broke the covenant with the house of bondage, the church, a lot of your family members and friends tried to convince you to return. Until this day, a lot of your family members and friends are still trying to get you to return to the church. That is the idolatrous spirit you broke the covenant with using your family and friends to get you to return to the house of bondage to reestablish the covenant. 
Israelites, don't fall for it. Don't return to your vomit. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Come out of her, my people. Do not be partakers with her. When the unclean spirits use the people around you to get you to return to old habits and everything starts to fall apart are signs of victory. The covenants were broken and the Most High received your prayers and fasting. In the spirit realm, when the unclean spirits try to reestablish the old covenants, you will begin to have a lot of dreams. In one night, you can have multiple dreams, one after another. The unclean spirits are desperately trying to reestablish the covenants. The scripture said unclean spirits are tormented and restless when they are cast out. Therefore, you will have multiple dreams of these devils trying to reestablish the covenants that were broken. And behold, they cried out saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and findeth none. When the Satans give you multiple dreams, they are hoping to confuse you so that you will ignore the dreams. Also, they give you multiple dreams hoping you will forget to break the covenants. Sleep paralysis occur when a demon holds your spirit down to prevent you from leaving the spirit realm until a covenant is established. After a night of multiple dreams, you often wake up forgetting the dreams. That is the workers of iniquity's way of making sure you don't break the covenants. Israelites know that every time you sleep, you dream, regardless if you remember the dream or not. Make it a habit to break evil covenants, known or unknown as well as establishing good covenants with the Most High. Dreams that reveal an unclean spirit is trying to establish a covenant are dreams where someone is giving you a gift. A person is giving you a hug. Excessive dreams of someone or something trying to get you to accept something from them. Signing documents. Winning the lottery. Someone placing a ring on your finger. All these dreams symbolizes covenant. There are many other dreams revealing a covenant was established. Ask the Most High to reveal them to you. The scripture said, as a man thinketh, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Israelites, it is important for you to view the world that you live in in the correct perspective. When you view the world in the lens of the Father, you will see a lot of the hardship and persecution are a disguise to conceal your victories and accomplishments. Start believing you're a warrior and you will become a warrior. The scripture said, as a man think it in his heart, so is he. A sign of victory for the Israelites in the awakening, censorship. Censorship is a spiritual attack as well as a sign of victory. Open Diary is a very good example. Despite the workers of iniquity that work at YouTube suppressing the data on this channel, a lot of people are hearing the messages. I can see the influence of the messages the Most High send through Open Diary in the real awakening. This is why the workers of iniquity suppress this channel like they do. The workers of iniquity who own all the social media platforms censor the awakening to discourage you and me. They want me to believe the messages are not reaching the people. They are hoping that you will see the stagnation of the channels they purposely suppress to make it appear as if the people are not listening. Israelites, trust me when I say the people are listening. Don't let their numbers fool you. Keep working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No one is greater than the creator of all who happens to be the God of Israel. When you view the world in the correct perspective, you will see how the scriptures are being fulfilled. The scripture said, narrow is the road that leads to life. Only a few will find the narrow road. The real awakening is the narrow road. The beast religion is the broad road that leads to destruction. Many that are in the beast religion are on the broad road. 
That is why they have billions upon billions of believers. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The Israelites and indigenous black people who don't read the scriptures for themselves will see the low views and the few in the awakening and think we are lost. Little do they know narrow is the road that leads to life. When they see how popular the house of bondage is with billions of believers, many of them believe they found salvation. The beast system is nothing but an illusion. The scriptures are being fulfilled right before our eyes. Israelites, the Most High has judged many heathen nations because of our prayers and fasting in this generation. The scripture said the prayers of the righteous unveil much. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. A lot of Israelites don't recognize the victories achieved through their prayer and fasting. Some of you don't recognize the judgments on these nations because the workers of iniquity conceal the judgments in mainstream media under natural disasters, mental illness, a tragedy, and the best one yet, an unknown cause. When you begin to view the world in the correct perspective, you will see the victories the Most High gave to you over your adversaries. Israelites, you have more victories than defeat. Don't let the fact that you live in the land of your captivity and your enemy is ruling over you as a sign of defeat. You can't help that you were born in the land of your captivity. The scriptures must be fulfilled in order for us to be redeemed. Never forget that the Most High gave you power over the kingdom of darkness and by no means can they hurt you. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you begin to see the victories, you will also see how the Most High has no mercy on the workers of iniquity. The Most High is still defending the righteous. Don't let the beast system make you believe the Most High doesn't exist or he's silent in this generation. The Most High is very aware of what is going on. His eyes are on the righteous, ready to defend the ones he loves. Just because the heathens report more on the tragedies against our people and conceal the judgments against them, it doesn't mean the Most High is not protecting the ones he loves. The Most High has his angels and camp around the ones that fear him to deliver them. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Israelites, the last sign I will share with you, the word of the Most High said the last will become first and the first will become last. It is written, regardless of how your enemies make you feel, all the righteous of Adam's descendants are promised by covenant with the Most High to save them. Despite the hard life you live here on earth, eternity for the righteous will be more glorious than we can ever imagine. That is why the Satans wage war with Adam's descendants. The poor man in the scripture live a hard life. When he transitioned to the afterlife, he went to Abraham, our father, waiting to inherit an eternity of joy and peace. While the rich man Lazarus, who had everything in the beast system in his generation, when he transitioned, he ended up on the side of Sheol where he is being tormented while he waits to spend eternity in the lake of fire with the Satans. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the people who make the beast system their heaven are in for a rude awakening. Israelites, when you view the world in the correct perspective, it will lift your spirit up. You will begin to see the hands of the Most High in your life. The hardships and temptations from the kingdom of darkness are disguised to distract you from your victories. Keep your eyes on the Most High. Remain positive in the trials that are meant to test you to elevate you like Job did. You don't need an army of flesh to defend you. Pick up the weapon the Most High gave to you, which is his word, and slay your enemies. 
the Most High is pouring out his spirit on his sons and daughters. Many of you should begin to prophesy. The Most High is revealing what the sealed scriptures was hiding. Israelites, make sure you're feeding your spirit the food that it needs to become a great servant for the Most High. When your heart is perfect towards the Most High, he can begin to show himself strong through you. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Salah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, but the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people, Selah.